His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, held a telephone call in which they discussed bilateral relations and consolidating joint action across various fields to serve the interests of both countries. The call also discussed issues and topics of mutual concern. His Majesty the King and His Highness reviewed the developments in the Middle East with a focus on the deteriorating humanitarian crisis in Gaza. The two leaders discussed means to enhance response mechanisms to the situation in Gaza, in addition to maximizing efforts to reach a ceasefire, provide full protection for civilians, and ensure the delivery of adequate humanitarian aid sustain sustainably through various methods without obstacles. They emphasized the importance of working towards preventing the expansion of the conflict in the region and pushing towards a political solution to achieve fair, comprehensive, and permanent peace on the basis of the two-state solution, which would maintain the stability and security of the region. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Order 22 of 2024 restructuring the Board of Trustees of the Bahrain Institute for Political Development, the BIPD. The Board of Trustees of the BIPD shall be headed by Dr. Ali bin Mohammed al Ramehi and includes the following members. Dr. May bin Tisleiman al Atebi, Vice Chairperson. Dr. Khalifa bin Ali al Fadl. Dr. Abtisam Mohammed Saleh al Dallal. Dr. Bassam Ismail al Bin Mohammed. Hassan Ibrahim Hassan. Dr. Ali Majid al Naimi, Muhammad Ibrahim al Sisi al Bainin, Ghazi Faisal al Rahma, and Bahja Muhammad al Dalami. Their term of membership shall be four years. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa issued Decree 30 of 2024, restructuring the board of directors of the social insurance organization, the SIO, based on the nominations of the concerned authorities and following the approval of the cabinet. The Board of Directors of the SIO will be reconstituted as follows. Rashid Mohammed Al Maraj, Chairman. Sheikh Al Aij bin Salman bin Al Al Khalifa, Member representing the government in its capacity as an employer. Nawal Ibrahim Al Khatar, Member representing the government in its capacity as an employer. Osama Saleh Al Alawi, Member representing the government in its capacity as an employer. Khalid Mohammed Najibi, Member representing employers in the private sector. Araf Ahmed Hijras, Member representing employers in the private sector. Sawsan Abdul Hassan Muhammad, member representing employers in the private sector. Dina Ahmed Al Fayez, member representing employees in the government sector. Dunya Faisal Sarhan, member representing employees in the government sector. Ahmed Hassan Ahmedan, member representing employees in the government sector. Ali Jafar Ragrag, member representing employees in the private sector. Yagub Yusuf Muhammad Hussain, member representing employees in the private sector. Abdullah Hassan Abdullah Mishakhil, member representing employees in the private sector. Khalid Muhammad Abdullah Taqi, member specialized in financial and insurance affairs. And Abdullah Saleh, Salah Saleh Sultan, member specialized in financial and insurance affairs. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Dhabiya Palace following His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's royal decree pardoning numerous inmates convicted of rioting and criminal cases in honor of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty's accession to the throne and coinciding with Eid al Fitr. His Royal Highness instructed the Minister of Interior and the Minister of Labor to ensure that all pardoned individuals are registered as beneficiaries of unemployment benefits for job seekers. The cabinet extended heartfelt condolences to the leadership, the government, and the people of Amman for the floods that swept Wilaya al Mdaybi region and expressed its sympathy to the victims' families. The cabinet monitored the concerning developments in the Middle East and their repercussions on regional peace and stability, highlighting the importance of exercising restraint, de-escalation tensions, resolving disputes diplomatically, upholding the rule of law, and respecting the principles of the United Nations Charter. The cabinet also called on the United Nations and the UN Security Council to fulfill their responsibilities to ensure international peace by resolving issues and conflicts in the region.
The Cabinet then approved the following. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Interior regarding future measures required to combat money laundering and terrorist financing. In this regard, the Cabinet assigned the relevant authorities to implement strategic initiatives within a specific time frame. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the establishment of the Bahrain Electricity and Water Holding Company. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the amendment of Article 1 of the decision to restructure the National Commission for Childhood. And a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to three proposals and two laws submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then reviewed the following. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding the Kingdom of Bahrain's membership in a number of international centers. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on initiatives to develop the labor market. And a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a number of MOUs between Bahrain and Oman. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met the 25th intake of the Crown Prince's International Scholarship Program CPISP alongside their parents and members of the CPISP Board of Directors at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness emphasized the determination of Bahraini citizens who remain the most successful investment in Bahrain's comprehensive development under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of continuing to support Bahraini youth and providing more opportunities for academic growth that contribute to the development of the kingdom to benefit all. He congratulated the students on their admission to the program, wishing them success in their future studies, which will demonstrate their determination to accomplish and excel. His Royal Highness commended the parents for instilling in their children a strong academic focus, thereby aiding in their personal development as well as the advancement of the kingdom. He congratulated the students on their acceptance to the program and lauded their performance during the application process. He noted that the students' performance in the application process gave them the opportunity to pursue their academic aspirations and is a reflection of their determination to achieve their ambitions. His Royal Highness expressed the Kingdom's pride and the unwavering determination of Bahraini citizens, reaffirming the Kingdom's commitment to provide quality opportunities that meet their aspirations across various levels. He commended the CPISP for its continuous successes across its various intakes, providing invaluable development opportunities across various fields. His Royal Highness commended the dedication of the CPISP staff in supporting the students and applauded the program sponsors for their role in supporting the CPISP's achievements. The recipients of the 2024 CPISP scholarships are as follows. Abdurrahman Hashim Abdurrahman Al-Bin Ali, American School of Bahrain. Al-Anood Majid Muhammad Al-Atawi, Al-Iman School. Ali Talib Hassan al mutawa Arabian Pearl Gulf School. Asil Hani Hussain Al-Arabi, British School of Bahrain. Diva Manoj Kishore Batia, British School of Bahrain. Ibrahim Ahmed Muhammad Abdullah, Ibn Khaldun National School. Fatma Ali Hassan Ibrahim, Al Wafa Secondary Girls School, Fatma Salah Abdul Rasul Muhammad, Bahrain Bayan School, Hassan Hussain Makki Al Akri, Nasim Secondary Boys School, Hassan Majid Abbas Aman, Aisa Town Secondary Boys School, Mahmoud Ali Abdul Jalil Al Latraif, Hamad Town Secondary Boys School, Maryam Hussain Ali Al Labriq, Sar Secondary Girls School, Masoom Ibrahim Abd Ali Khair, Quality Education School, Muhammad Safwan Rushdi Arikat, al Raja School, Sara Ahmed Hussain Hussain, British School of Bahrain, Sara Hassan Muhammad Al Hamran, Sar Secondary Girls School, Sara Muhammad Abdul Aziz Khalil, Notre Dame Catholic Sixth Form College in the UK, Sayyid Hashim Jamil Mustafa, Sharaf, St. Christopher's School, Talia Mitchell, King's College London Mathematics School in the UK, and Yasmin Amin Ahmed Al Arayyad, St. Christopher's School. The students expressed their gratitude and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his unwavering support in continuing to invest in Bahraini citizens by empowering and providing them with quality opportunities across various fields. A number of senior officials also attended the meeting.
Deputy of Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received a number of senior BDF officers in the presence of the Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan al naimi and the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagan al naimi The senior officers and the Commander-in-Chief exchanged congratulations on the occasion of Eid al-Fitr, wishing each other many happy returns. The Commander-in-Chief affirmed that under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, and with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the BDF will continue to enhance its weaponry and units with advanced military systems, combat equipment, and training and administrative capabilities to maintain the sustainability of the BDF's high level of combat and administrative readiness. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, headed Bahrain's delegation participating in the second joint ministerial meeting of the strategic dialogue between the GCC and Central Asian countries in Uzbekistan. The minister delivered a speech in which he stressed the need for close follow-up to ensure that the objectives of the joint action plan between the two sides are achieved and that proposals are submitted to consolidate bilateral relations. He also stressed the necessity for intense coordination, political consultations, and unified efforts on the international level to confront regional and global challenges, crises, and threats. Dr. Zayani praised the stances of the Central Asian countries and their support for just Arab causes, particularly the Palestinian cause, noting that the security and stability of the Middle East depends on setting this important issue in a just and sustainable manner. He said that Bahrain is committed to its firm stance that calls for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza and the protection of civilians. The minister expressed deep concern about the increasing tensions in the region, stressing the need to take immediate measures to prevent further escalation and calling on all parties to adhere to restraints and on the international community to promptly intervene in order to maintain peace and security. Dr. Zayani discussed the dangerous situation in the Red Sea region and Bab el Mandeb Strait from the perspective of the GCC, noting that the attacks launched by the armed Houthis against civilian commercial ships constitute a serious threat to regional security and international maritime navigation. At the conclusion of the meeting, a joint statement was issued in which the participants welcomed the second joint ministerial meeting of the strategic dialogue between the GCC and Central Asian countries, expressing their readiness to ensure the continuation of this dialogue platform on a regular basis. The two sides reviewed implementing the results of the first summit of the GCC Heads of Strate State for Strategic Dialogue and Central Asian countries, and stressed that this coordination is developing steadily as a solid platform for enhancing mutual under understanding. The two sides affirmed their joint commitment to forming an advanced and sustainable partnership based on common values and mutual interests. The two sides stressed the need to enhance trade exchanges and investments between the two sides and the importance of cooperation to ensure the sustainability of supply chains. The ministers exchanged views on regional and international issues, stressing the importance of coordinating their positions through strategic dialogue mechanisms. The two sides agreed on importance of maintaining the multilateral system and intensifying efforts to achieve peace, security, stability and prosperity in the world. Regarding the situation in Gaza, the two sides called on the international community to take a serious and firm stance and for immediate and sustainable ceasefire and to provide protection for civilians in Gaza and the West Bank. The GCC and Central Asian countries share close relations and continuous joint coordination in all fields in accordance with the common interests and historical ties between the two sides. More in this report. The GCC countries are keen to strengthen relations with various regional and international blocs based on the importance of strengthening alliances in order to maximize common interests and achieve the desired aspirations. The relations between the GCC and the countries of Central Asia are considered a distinguished relationship that has witnessed continuous growth over the years through joint efforts to advance this cooperation. The latest indicator of this growth was the Gulf Summit with the countries of Central Asia, which is considered the first summit of its kind between the two blocs and was hosted by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, marking a new chapter that contributes to the advancement and development of peoples and countries. This summit was preceded by the holding of the first joint ministerial meeting for
for the Strategic Dialogue in 2022, in which the foreign ministers of the GCC affirmed their commitment to establishing a partnership with the countries of Central Asia based on common values, interests, and deep historical ties, which also witnessed the signing of the Joint Action Plan from 2023 to 2027. Several joint visits and meetings at the level of leaders and officials were held between the two sides, which affirmed the positive common desire to develop relations. These meetings also witnessed the signing of bilateral agreements in a number of fields, which aim to exchange expertise, knowledge and experiences. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abil Latif bin Rashid Zayani, held a meeting with Foreign Minister of Uzbekistan, Bakhtiyar Saidov, on the occasion of the second strategic dialogue meeting between the GCC and Central Asian countries. The meeting highlighted the strong bilateral relations and fields of cooperation and ways to further enhance them to benefit both countries and their peoples, in addition to discussing topics of mutual concern. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abil Latif bin Rashid Zayani, held a meeting with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Kyrgyzstan, Jean Bek Kulabayev, on the sidelines of the second strategic dialogue meeting between the GCC and Central Asian countries. During the meeting, aspects of bilateral relations were discussed and ways to develop them in various political, economic and investment fields to serve mutual interests, in addition to discussing regional issues of common interest. The Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture, Engineer Wa'al Limbarak, visited and inspected Amharic and Capital Municipalities to review the development of rainwater drainage networks and other solutions for rainfall accumulation across the Kingdom of Bahrain in preparation for tomorrow's weather forecast. The Minister said that the Capital Municipality and Municipal Councils have increased their preparations to deal with rainwater accumulations in anticipation of weather forecasts, indicating the possibility of heavy rainfall over the coming two days. Limbarak said that the ministry had developed an integrated plan in the event of heavy rainfall and an emergency team and a joint operations room have been set up to carry out necessary procedures in coordination with the Ministry of Works, Civil Defense and Municipal Councils. The Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim al Hawaj, inspected a number of main streets and various governorates, including the tunnel linking the Buri and Ali area, Al Lawzi Street, Khalif al Kabir Street, and Mharrag, and Dry Dock Street to follow up on proactive steps to prevent rainwater pooling in a manner that ensures the flow and safety of traffic, as thunderstorms are expected. The Minister affirmed that the Ministry carries out periodic and continuous cleaning of rain drainage holes, regular maintenance of pumping stations, and emptying rainwater collection tanks. He stated that the ministry is keen on ensuring the smooth flow of traffic movement in main roads and tunnels in various regions of the kingdom. The Meteorological Directorate at the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications forecasted intermittent moderate to heavy thundery showers that are expected to affect the kingdom until Tuesday evening. The expected showers will be accompanied by strong wind gusts reaching 40 knots at times, causing rough seas. The public is advised to be cautious and avoid sea activities.